Bizarre physics with Dr. Ooh. Daniel Kahnemer. That is mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. But we should just continue the mind-blowing. I mean, that's what we do here on the Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So, so for our latest Into the Wild segment, this is something that Tabiso has been excited about for the longest <laughs> time. We knew that this guy was going to come in. He's a researcher. Yeah. His name is Aaron Barnes, and he's been part of a team last year that discovered five species of ancient velvet worms. I mean, can you cope? Yeah, that date five million years back. And I mean, this is why you were excited, weren't you? You were really, really excited very, about very this. Very, very excited. And you should stay excited because Aaron Barnes is with us. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. It's great Thank to you. have you. Thanks. Well, Thanks Aaron, this is fantastic work that you do. So you've got five species of velvet worms that yes. have been discovered. Yes. Well, tell us about that. So, um, not really worms. Uh, the, way, the name worm is a bit misleading. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're more like an ancient... A uh, thing on their own, um, not necessarily because when you say worm, people think caterpillar or earthworm, yes. or uh, but they're more historic uh, or more prehistoric and uh, completely different from those. And the five new species that we found, uh, we found them in the garden route. Um, you know, we went to go look there. We knew about them previously, so yeah, yeah the study was conducted. What, what are their names? So the names themselves are not as fascinating as you might think. Uh, oh no, there, there are, be. There are I'm, certain I'm rules that we have to, to abide by. Um, so it's Melaria. Mira, Edenensis, Tilbachensis. Those are the, the four new ones. So when we name the species, mm. um, there are certain rules we have to follow. So yeah. it has to be in Greek or Latin. Yes. Um, and what we generally do is try and keep it local. So we okay. name it after where we found it or something to do in the area. Yeah. So for example, Melaria yeah. um, relates to honey. And we found it in Otanika, which also refers to honey. Um, so we try and, and link something local to the name. Ah, oh, that's yeah. brilliant. Fascinating. Because I know that usually people's go-to is to name them after their exes. <laughs> uh, but because some you. people's exes <laughs> remind them of like some sort of worm, right? <laughs> it, it happens to the best of us. But let's focus on the worm itself. Coming yes. across them, I mean, you, you know, for years we've been digging in the back garden growing up. Yes. Get the little earthworms there, etc. But you as a researcher, mm -hmm. you yep. go seek out these yep. species. So how did you come across this, uh, these, these latest species? So we've always known about a few of them yep. um, from historic records. So the first species was found, I think it was 1910, so early 1900s. Uh, so we knew of one. And... You know, more research has been done recently as, as techniques have progressed. Um, and we knew that there were more out there, yeah. mm. so within the area, mm. um, sort of being wilderness nice Um So we went out there and you, we actively look for them. So we don't set traps or anything. We go into the forest and we look inside dead wood and so on. So it's usually many cares of hiking for finding only a few worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we knew about them before and we just wanted to see what was there. So we went out and every day hiking just looking through the forest, sort of off the beaten path. I don't know when you get the time to go to the gym if you are <laughs> always hunting for worms. I mean, it's actually quite mind-blowing. <laughs> but that's not the, the conversation for this morning. We'll take that off air. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, the natural habitat, right? Yes. Can they only be found on the garden route where you discovered them, or can they be found elsewhere in the country? So the species that I found and looked for were only in the garden route. Oh. Um, there was one that we found, so Tilbach ensis, in Tilbach. Mm. Um, so that one was closely related. So, um, yeah, so the ones that I found are only there. Yeah. But there are velvet worms throughout the country. Oh. Um, so sort of from the Cedarburg area, they come down along the coast mm. all the way up into Limpopo. Are so. they more sort of uh, likely to be found in what, like wet areas? Yes, as yes. To yeah. Oh. Um, so, yeah, only in forests, or majority in forests. Forest areas. Um, but there are some that are found in caves, there mm. are some that are found sort of in moss in riverbeds in certain areas, but predominantly in forests. Yeah. Okay. In layman's yeah. terms, what makes a velvet worm unique from other worms that we found in our back gardens growing up? Ooh, okay. So, um, the, the way that they evolved and how early they evolved. So, yeah. um, it's been suspected that they've been around for almost 350 million years wow. as, wow. as wow. the worm itself. The species I've found only about 5 million years. Yes. Um, and different in their comp how they're built, uh, how they reproduce, mm. um, where you find them, what they need from the environment. So completely different. Um, and they actually do feel like velvets where they get their name from. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's so, so quite different, yeah. This is such fascinating work that you do. I really do love this. And yes, we've indeed. got more of this conversation going on. It's all about nature. We're delving into the world of worms, these new species that have been discovered. And Erin is still here. Connect with us on our Facebook page, Express or Morning Show, SABC3. Let us know if you're finding any worms in your backyard that maybe resemble the ones that erin has been able to go out and find. But stick around for more Nature Talk. We'll see you after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show.
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on S3. Open up to nature. Open up to nature talk. We're continuing the chat on the five species of ancient velvet worms dating back more than five million years. Years. Can you sure. cope with that? They've been discovered by Aaron Barnes and his team. And it's such a fascinating world that you've been able to tap into. And we're loving all of this. Thanks so much for staying with us. Thanks. Indeed. I actually would love to know, when you sort out these new velvet worms, I yes. want to know, why was the study conducted? Mm. So <laughs> Why? Yeah, why? Because it's good to yeah, ask no. why. I mean, it's a simple. Because we should have asked this earlier. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> two reasons. Two reasons why. Firstly, um, I mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, back in the early 1900s, this first species was found. Yes. Um, so what we wanted to do was use modern techniques, so DNA analyses, to see exactly what is there and the extent of where it's found, so its range. Um, so with these worms, they look very, very similar. Um, if you had to put two next to each other, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Oh, wow. But genetically, they would be very, very different. Um, so that was sort of the whole motive for the taxonomy side of it. Ah. And then we also looked at evolution of the area. So these worms are a very good indicator of how forests have moved throughout history, yeah. uh, sort of contracted, expanded since five million years ago, how they've changed. So we use the genetic results to sort of infer what happened to the area oh. as a whole. So from my study, we found that, you know, the forests moved in accordance to climate mm. and that affected the gene flow. And then we use those two to piece together the history, also using climate records and things and, like that. And, and what, what are some of the key findings? And of course, that is one yes. really big one. But what are some of the other things that you sort of discovered through the study that stood out for you that have, has been quite a, a fascinating thing that's probably going to, I suppose, inspire your next move yes. in terms of research? So uh, the main finding was the new species, of course, mm. um, and how they, like I said, their range within the environment. So yes. how common they are, how rare they are. Yeah. Um, and basically, we, we use that to sort of assess, like I said, we look at the whole area, mm -hmm. and the forest specifically, and it is a conservation area. Ah. Yep. So we, we use those results and um, sort of to infer on conservation and to recommend certain things based on either what we found for the forest or for the worms themselves. Oh, yep. stunning. It is a, a really fascinating topic, this, you know, worms and, and how they are almost reflective mm, of the yes. way we treat mm. our environment as well. Yes, and I'm yeah. sure us as humans, we, uh, we can actually do a lot of things to ensure that that environment is preserved. Yes. So is the next step not only the velvet worms themselves, but also to encourage and educate us to live in harmony with the species yes. as rare as this? Yes, so um, one of the interesting things about these worms is that they can only occur and persist within a pristine environment. Okay. So especially in the garden route, things like uh, pine plantations, fires, have a major impact on the forest. Yeah. And as soon as the forest is cut down in a certain area, those worms are likely to go extinct. Yeah. So again, using the results from the study, we can say, you know, this area may have more importance in terms of conservation than others. And then we can wait where we should put our resources, the limited resources we have. I um, love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah, have you seen My cool. Octopus Teacher? I haven't, actually. But you've heard of it? Yeah. I have heard of it, yeah. Have you built, like, any bonds, unusual <laughs> bonds, with any of the worms you find where you really just fall in love with the worm and actually this is a thing that you've got with the worm? Uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> but it's a cool documentary, you know? I think it, it really could be is. quite interesting. Uh, they, they are very, very fascinating yeah. when you do find them. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, they don't always last very long when we do take them in for science. Yeah. Um, so, no, no bonds. We don't have them in little cages or anything. Uh, um, but when you do first come across them, I mean, it's very bewildering to see something so different that you've never come across before. Yes, so, yeah, I imagine. Sure. No, it is indeed. Okay, uh, thank you so much for all of the insight today. No, uh, this is, it's bizarrely fascinating. And I think uh, one thing that impacts me is the fact that something like a species is reflective of their habitat, mm, which yeah. tells us as humans so that we should also be a bit more aware of our habitat so that you mentioned pristine conditions. Yes. That's up to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's mm -hmm. up to the way we interact so that we too can survive. Because we're not here for a long time. No. We're here for a good time. Ah. Oh, come on. I, I'm just saying. That's the truth right there. Like what? Well, if we want to have a good time in the future, then let's make sure that we protect the now, right? Thank you Indeed. very much, Aaron Barnes. Such fantastic work you're doing. And we're so inspired, really, this morning, too. I think go out there and search those things that are so unconventional. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's professional, but you can also do the same thing in your own backyard. Find those interesting things that just take you traveling into a new world. Uh, let's go play some games right now. Yeah, we should. <laughs>